What's up guys, I am Marcus Schultz, hanging out here in the studio today. I'm preparing for the Los Angeles 12 release party in LA at Avalon on February 18th and 19th. I got a little session up here. I wish I could play it for you, but you have to wait until February 18th to hear this. But what I do have is uh, some questions from you guys. Uh, you know, this year I promised, I promised you guys that I would do some more uh, uh, video blogs. So here we are, another video blog, another uh, set of questions. Let's get right into it. First question comes from Michael Zakusilo in Kiev. He writes, can you tell about your favorite moments in 2011 and your most memorable event? Waiting to hear you on the 10th of March here in Kiev. Um, yeah, there was so many amazing uh, shows last year. One of my absolute favorites was uh, Space at Winter Music Conference uh, last year here in Miami. Uh, we wound up playing uh, two nights, sold out both nights. The second night, um, it was the closing party for Ultra. And I remember Cosmic Gate was playing with me, Wippenberg uh, sh showed up as well. And there was uh, quite a while when all of us were in the DJ booth going back to back to back. Um, so there was, what, four, four guys, four German guys hanging out in the DJ booth, all playing back-to-back. -back. Uh, and the crowd was loving it. Uh, it was packed, and, and it was one of my favorite, uh, favorite moments of last year. Um, can you imagine me, Cosmic, Gate, and Wippenberg all taking turns going back-to-back -to, -back to a full house at Space here in Miami during Winter Music Conference. Very special night. Next question comes from Jeremy Baker in San Francisco, California. Jeremy writes, Hey Marcus, what do you do for fun that is not related to music when or if you ever have days off? Uh, I love sports. I love playing basketball. I love playing baseball. I try and go to the gym as often as possible when, uh, when I'm home. It's very difficult to go to the gym when you're on the road because of jet lag. Uh, but, you know, I figure jumping around on stage gives me enough cardio. Uh, but baseball and basketball are my two favorite sports to play. And uh, I like football as well, watching, but uh, it get, that gets a little rough to play, so I don't play football. Next question comes from Chris Bartolo in Melbourne, Australia. He says, hey Marcus, how did you start learning to compose and DJ? Well, I started off as a break dancer, um, and that's kind of like, uh, you know, why I think that, um, you know, I, I, I start off as a dancer first, you know, and so I have this kind of, uh, image and vibe when it comes to the dance floor because I that's how I started was through dancing and then um, me and my crew uh, threw a party one night and we were all gonna take turns DJing and uh, they chickened out and um, I wound up DJing the entire party uh, so that was the that's how I started DJing from that moment on it's like I knew this is what I wanted to do and then as far as making music it just kind of grew you know I used to, I always listened to music differently. Uh, I never, you know, when I listen to songs, I analyze it. Even when I was a little kid, I used to analyze the bass lines, the, the patterns, the synthesizers. So I think it was just something that was always inside of me as far as uh, composing and producing. Um, and um, it just, you know, as the years went on from DJing, I just nat went naturally went into uh, producing music as well. Uh, next question comes from Selma in Toronto, Canada. Selma writes, what is the best and toughest aspect of your career? And is it still as fulfilling as it once was? Absolutely, I love what I do. I mean, there's, this is all I've ever done. Um, and I, don't, I can't see myself doing anything else. You know, I, my, my father was, uh, um, was a musician, so it's in my blood. Um, but the hardest part about this is the travel. Um, you know, it, I always say it's very, very easy to wake up um, you know, after a good night's sleep and then drive down the street and play at a, at, at a local club. But co arriving somewhere completely upside down with jet lag um, and then having to perform is the hardest part of it. I, sometimes I wish that I had two, three weeks to prepare for a gig, um, but you know, at this pace, it, it's impossible. You're just, you're preparing uh, as you go along. So that is the hardest part for me is just you know, uh, the traveling and then just trying to get all the preparation that you want uh, for each gig. Uh, next question comes from Marcio Juca de Barros, originally from Brazil and now living in Orange County, California. Um, Marcio writes, what does it take to become a, do a top DJ? What, differenti what differentiates them from the rest? 
I believe lots of training, but maybe you could go further explaining that. Um, yeah, I, I think what makes, uh, separates DJs is you gotta have your own style. You gotta be known for something, but at the same time you gotta be flexible. I mean, you know, I'm known for a certain style, but I also read the crowd. And if I feel that a crowd needs something just a little different to spice it up, you know, it, I'm not totally opposed if it's if it's not too cheesy to, to give it to him I mean you have to you have to remember the party is is the most important thing and, and I think that's what differentiates a lot of DJs some guys will just go out there and just play a set a, a straight set um, and and it doesn't matter what city they're in it's it's always the same but I, I think that you just kind of have to you know read the crowd a little bit but that being said, I know that there's some amazing DJs out there that have never been discovered. I've, I've met so many talented resident DJs um, all over the world who just haven't had that break yet. You know, sometimes it's also just a little bit of luck. Um, and, and I know that if they keep at it, um, good things will happen to them. So, I mean, if you're a DJ out there, that's what I say to you is just, just keep keep working uh, you know it's it's a little bit of luck and, and I, I I don't take this for granted because I know that uh, I happen to be one of the lucky ones there's so many talented guys out there next question comes from Benchora Tahi Yasin in Algeria um, Benchora writes throughout your career have you ever DJed at a wedding and if so how many actually I have I DJed at one wedding and it was um, you know, right around my breakdance days. So I went, I DJed this wedding, and I was playing like breakdance music and scratching and everything, and they hated it. The people actually called me the following Monday and asked for their money back. So that was the first and only time I ever played at a wedding. Um, you know, it was a, I thought I did a good job. The kids were all going crazy, but uh, um, you know, mom and dad and, and the grandparents and, and everybody else, I don't think they had a very good time. So uh, that was the first and, and last wedding that I'd ever DJed at. Um, and finally, uh, last question comes from Giovanni Guerrera in LA. Over here in Los Angeles, as I'm sure you can imagine, we are dying in anticipation for the release party. My question is, what are your emotions and thoughts going into such a big weekend playing back-to-back -back shows in the City of Angels? How does a gig like this compare to Transmission, which is your biggest show of the year? Well, yeah, I mean, so much uh, uh, prep goes into um, a show like that. Transmission as well, you know, I do the theme for Transmission every year, so I kind of, I base my set around the theme. But when you have a show like the uh, LA release party where I'm playing a solo set from beginning to end, um, you know, you just, you can't, uh, I, I, you have to prepare an entire night of music. And what I try and do is, I, I try and imagine if there was the ideal lineup of different DJs and, and how they would, pro you know, how each DJ's sound would help the night progress. And then, I base my set on, on that kind of a philosophy. So I'll play um, the first two hours, I'll play like a, a, a Marcus Schultz opening set, and then we'll get into like three or four hours Marcus Schultz peak hour set, and then later on we'll get into classics and down the rabbit hole. So it's like the night, uh, my preparation goes into the night more programming um, and, and, and some of the tracks that I want to play and, and how I want the night to evolve. I think that's the biggest difference between preparing for an all-night solo show like this um, and, and preparing for a you know 90-minute massive uh, transmission type show. Um, the second night we're, we're gonna do, uh, I'll have some guests and, and that night will be uh, programmed just a little bit differently. I'll be doing some back-to-back um, sets with Comha and Mr. Pitt, um, so we're actually, uh, you know, planning with them how those little sections of the night are going to go as well. So, yeah, the February 18th and 19th, the Los Angeles 12 release party in Los Angeles. Lots of preparation going on, and uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. You know, Los Angeles is the inspiration for this year's City Series uh, compilation. So I I'm really looking forward to coming out there and, and uh, giving you guys two nights of, of massive fun. Anyway, 
That's it for our video blog uh, for this time. Thank you so much. Send your questions to me either on Facebook, on MarcusSchultz.com. There's, a, a, there's some forums there. You can start a thread. Um, or you can send it to me on Twitter. We're always monitoring the, the Twitters and, and, and all that stuff. So thanks, guys, for tuning in. And uh, I will see you guys in Los Angeles, February 18th and 19th.